Hey, little buddy, how you doing? Oh, you want to be LB now? Okay, LB is fine. So how you doing? Really, you've been pretty busy. What am I doing? I'm working with Wireshark. No, it's not a real shark. No, it's not a wired shark either. I don't think they drink coffee, but that's okay. No, what I'm doing is I'm working with Wireshark. It's a protocol analyzer. It used to be called uh, Ethereal or Ethereal, something like that. But what it does is it allows me to be able to see the traffic that's on my network and then I can see it and analyze it. Yeah, it is kind of like uh, cars and buses on a road. But what's nice about Wireshark is it's a free downloadable tool and it's being used in the new CCNA curriculum, both CCNA Discovery, CCNA Exploration, and yes, CCNP curriculum. So it's a great tool. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, okay, back to the cars and the freeways. Um, let me talk about this. Computers, when they try to communicate with each other, they send an either electrical signal, a radio signal, or a light signal across the, some kind of network and the other computer takes those signals and they decode it into ones and zeros into what we call a, a frame. And I'm going to call a packet right now. And each of these frames have a specific duty. Kind of like, you know, taxis and buses have different jobs. Well, these have different ones. For example, one of them might be uh, use a protocol called FTP, File Transfer Protocol. And that allows you to download files. So that might be for file transfer protocol. Then we might have another one here that's HTTP. That means I'm doing something with a web server. And then you have another one that's SMTP, Simple Message Transfer Protocol. That means it's outgoing mail. So I can take a look at each one of these. I lost you, didn't I? Well, here, let me show you. First thing we have to do is we have to get the computer ready to work with Wireshark. Number one, we have to have a network cable. Now, I'm going to have uh, this connected to my Ethernet, so we're going to use Ethernet. And the next thing is, where is that connected to? Well, it could be connected to a hub, which is kind of old technology, but a hub would allow me to see all traffic coming in, because in a hub, when a signal goes in the hub, it goes out all the ports. Most likely, though, I'll be working connected to a switch. Now, a switch is smarter, and it only allows traffic that is destined to me for my laptop to see. For example, there's unicast, which means it's addressed to me. Uh, there's broadcast, which means it goes to everybody. And there's multicast, which means if you're part of a select group, you get to see that traffic. But we can do something tricky. It's called monitoring or port monitoring. And I can set the switch up so all the traffic will be redirected to my laptop. OK, now I got that. Let's go ahead and let's launch Wireshark. Okay, there it comes to my screen. Looks like kind of a blank screen, so the next thing we have to do is we have to tell Wireshark how to find the traffic. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to click on the up in the top, Capture, and then I'm going to come down and click on Options. And now I have, yeah, there's a new screen, Wireshark Capture Options. Now I have to tell which interface for my Wireshark to look for. Now I have multiple ones on here, so I'm going to click on the drop down box and I'm going to choose the Ethernet one. So now it's going to look out my cable. It's basically going to look for packets out there. Okay, and now I got that done. I'm going to make sure that the box says capture packets in promiscuous mode is clicked. Yeah, I know that sounds mischievous, doesn't it? Actually, that makes sense because promiscuous mode makes my Ethernet card look at all traffic instead of just mine, kind of like Snoopy. So I guess that is mischievous. Anyway, I'm going to leave everything else here as default, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the Start button. Okay. Oh, we got another window here. Now see all these packets coming across? You can see they're by categories of protocols. Those are actually called uh, PDUs, Protocol Data Units. So there's FTP, HTTP. You can see all the traffic coming across. And that's probably just about enough. Okay, I'm going to click on Stop. Okay, now here's a new screen. Yes, there is a lot of lines of information there. I see that. And actually, when you first look at it, it's a little overwhelming. But then it breaks it down into three panes. And we can actually, well, let me explain it to you here. 
If you look at the top pane, that is the list of how I've captured the packets. So it shows them in order. The next pane down gives a little more detail on the specific line that I am clicked on. And the last one just shows in a different format. I'm in hexadecimal and ASCII. I'll explain that to you later. Okay, let's go back up the top one, the list pane here. Okay, it's actually got six columns here. The first column you'll see it's numbered one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What that is, is that shows the order the packets are captured in. Now the next one over says time. And it's actually, it's showing right now in seconds, but we're really looking at microseconds. That's how far apart each packet was captured from the next one. Now the next one's real important. That one is source. Who did this packet come from? It's like in an envelope, you know, the return address in an envelope. That's who it came from. So if I sent you a letter, they would show who it came from. That's the source. And it'll either be displayed as an IP address, or it might be showed as a uh, domain name, like www.wireshark.org or something like that. The destination column is who's it going to. So again, it's an IP address or domain name. So that would be like in an envelope who I'm addressing. So if I'm sending you a letter, that would have your name on it. The next column, which is the two, three, four, fifth column is protocol. And you'll see all these letters in here. There's ICMP or TCP or FTP. These are the protocols that this frame was designed for. Remember I told you about the frames? They have different protocols. Well, this tells which protocol they are in, that it's using. So it could be HTTP, TCP. And the next one, info, is just kind of like a summary of what's in that packet. You with me so far? Great. Now, let's go down to the next pane. The next pane gives a little more detail of what the one I had highlighted, and it's going to break it down so I can find out more specific detail on that particular uh, frame or packet. And the last one, as I told you, would show it in hexadecimal, which right now doesn't mean a whole bunch to you. So with this, I can maybe look at an SMTP packet, and I might even be able to read what the sender typed in the email. <laughs> yes, that's snooping, and I wouldn't do that on purpose. My purpose is to find what kind of traffic I have out there, to see what the traffic's doing to my network, control it. And that's why we have security. You know, you open your email so that people can't read your packets. Yeah, I know that's a relief. Well, I hope this gives you a little understanding of what Wireshark is and how we use it to capture traffic. And you know what's great about this is because it's used in the curriculum, my students love it. It suddenly made packets come real. They read about them, but they didn't know what they were. Now it's real, and teachers are loving it too. So in the new curriculum, this is a, just a great tool. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking we need to get to class here. Right? We got some students going. So next time I'll tell you a little more about the details. So LB, let's get going.